Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up uh, 642. We get the Nasdaq up 57. S&Ps are up 50. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Jason Path, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday, folks, at quarter past the hour. Jason, what's going on, brother? Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Doing good. Exciting day on the markets. Heard you talking to airlines there in the last segment. Um, interesting, interesting uh, play right now. I was actually looking... Uh, well, I was getting ready. You got the Jets, the J-E-T-S, E-T-F, right? Pure play. Okay. Um, E-T-F in the airlines. And I was actually looking at that earlier today. It's up like 13%, 12 to 15%. Today. Um, and I hear you on the airlines. I'm with you. The problem is, um, you know, in a world where oil can go to $37 below zero, right, anything can happen with, with an airline that's broke with no customers. Sure. Um but my problem with the airlines and other stocks like that right now that have been beaten up is, um, you know, it's really a, it's a two part bet. You, you're betting on the broader market and then you need the airlines to do well because the airlines have, have had such outside in, sized impact either way. Right. You see this the right. Lines. On an up day, they're way up on a down day. They're way down. Um, so you really if you're betting on the airlines right now, you're betting that the market's going to continue to go up, which I think is is um, something you need to think about from here. And number two, you're also betting on the airlines. And I agree with you 100%. I mean, I understand the fear of missing out feeling, but any one of these airlines uh, could take a turn for the worse. See, I was looking at, you know, I've sent. But just a as chart you said, about, the percentages are big because we're at small numbers. I know. It's, you know. Yeah. 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 It, it, it feels like it's, it could be an opportunity, but, you know, when 10% of people traveling year over year uh, of what they were this time last year, um, not sure that's a, it's a bet to you take. You know, if I've learned anything in this COVID, folks, okay, which is, I was thinking about this the other night, that you can think of the best businesses in the world, and you better never get too secure. <laughs> because that's right. When, 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 I, when I look at the amount of, you know, I mean, my family, you know, they don't have a lot of bars in Boston, best things in the world, right? Guess what? Millions of dollars down the drain. Sports teams, millions of dollars down the drain. There's, there's, I mean, there's stuff out here, man, that you just never, that you always dream that, oh, I wish I could have that, right? <laughs> Gone. You know, and, and they'll be That's back, right. folks, but you know, for where the peaks are that we were, I, that'd be five, six, seven years, man. I mean, this ain't coming back in a year, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I mean, it, it, it brought all of us a clear understanding of how close we were. and We never realized it at the time how close we were. Right? Sure. To, to just total, utter catastrophe in so many areas of our life. Now, you and I, we both have things to be blessed about. No and, doubt. and as you said, people will be back, no question. But we didn't realize this year, this time last year, right, those same folks in the businesses had no idea how close to the brink they were. Right. Oh, you, you never would. I mean, just, you know, always thought that was like, this is a solid businessman. So, hey, I have your charts up here. So... Well, we want to want to go into the S and P or the gasoline. Where do you want to start? Yeah, let's talk about the S and P. I mean, obviously the markets are way up today. Um, you know, my thought here is you've got the two charts on top of each other. Um, the top chart is the S and P versus the forward twelve month EPS uh, going back to two thousand. Okay. You know, Twenty year chart. Uh, the correlation is strong. 40 EPS correlates pretty well to S&P price. Uh, the bottom is just since March of this year, the last two months. Okay. They're headed in opposite directions. And my point here is one of those two trend lines, if you look at the bottom, is wrong, right? Either either we've you know, mis miscast 40 EPS or price is going to have to – this has to be a realignment at some point. Wow. Okay. Um, now, I get, now, saying that – Maybe maybe that statement's wrong, right? Like maybe for the first time in the, in the history of the universe, you know, the stock market is permanently dislocated from future earnings. But um, that notwithstanding, something has to realign. Uh, as an economist, I can tell you, I, I'm concerned that the four DPS is is almost still too optimistic. Folks, this forecast, I don't know if they fully baked in a second, a third wave. I think folks are betting on. Uh, a vaccine, which is a solid bet, but not a sure thing. Um, so we could even see that come down further. At some point, there's going to have to be a rationalization between your forward EPS and then the S&P price. I can't tell you if that's next week. can't tell you if that's tomorrow. And I know a lot of short-term folks are listening. But, um, but you know, kind of like as we were talking about the airlines, you got to be careful stepping in sure. uh, to the S&P at this point. Again, another up day. 
and day to day, uh, you have some opportunities to ride it up as it recovers. I think we're up 37% from the trough. But at some point, we're going to have to have a rationalization between future expectations and S&P. And again, this is why not to keep circling back on the scene, but, you know, hotels, airlines, cruises. At the end of the day, over the you know last 20 years or as long as you've been in the market, you got to get back to the idea that this is about growth. Right. And so many people right now are fixated on, well, it's just going to get back to where it was. Well, that's not investable. That that might be short-term tradable, and that's certainly a viable opportunity. But as investors, as capital allocators, we want growth. And getting back from 10% of last year to 60% of last year, you know, by the end of this year is not growth if you're an airline or a hotel or you know, one of those businesses. So I encourage folks to look, if you, if you are bullish on the market or still think it has room to run, you still, you've got to be trading up into quality. You've got to be looking for areas of growth. I'm not hearing enough folks talk about growth and um, I think that's going to be no, the, long term no where you want to be. Yeah, because it's pretty hard to talk about growth when, when you just want to that's get right. back to even, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. But getting back to even shouldn't be an investable thesis either. And I think still too many folks are. are sure. So here, talk to me about uh, Apple mobility data. Yeah, so this is more of a global theme. Uh, you know, obviously, if, uh, there's some places that are still behind where we are. Um, I, interestingly, uh, Italy and United Kingdom, places that, you know, started to get the challenge with the virus earlier on, you know, you've got a place like Brazil that's right now mushrooming into really the epicenter, but Italy is still down. You know, mobility data is a great proxy for economic activity. Folks are out and about. Are they spending money? Are they visiting places using their discretionary dollars? Okay. So the Apple mobility data is basically Apple tracking folks through their cell phones. Again, are you visiting merchants? Are you, are you driving in your car? Are you using transit? Are you going to stores? Are you going to restaurants? Um, Germany's back to where they were. United States is lagging a little bit. Places like Italy and United Kingdom are still way behind. And again, countries that aren't represented on here, like a Brazil, which is you know, a large economy, China, are still lagging even more as well. To me, at the end of the day, I think the United States continues to be more resilient than others. I know the dollar is way down today. Could be head back to the mid, you know, 90s over the next month, but longer term through the balance of 2020, I still think you see dollar strength um, as, as some places are continuing to battle the virus. Mainly Europe, right? As you see places like Italy, United Kingdom, Spain way behind and as Europe continues to fall further behind, China's never had more pressure. You know, the current regime has never been under more pressure than they are today. For sure. If the, US, the United States continues to rise, the dollar continues to stay strong. Um, and, and so a quick uh, one on natural gas. Yeah, I mean, we've been in this really interesting range here, right? So between, you know, 160 and $2 on gas futures, that's still like Appalachian-based um, exploration and production companies that are focused on gas. Um, they got small and lean and efficient, you know, a uh, couple of months ago over the last couple of years. You still have a problem with LNG that needs to come back for a fast to get to 250 or 3, but I still like fast to 250 by the end of this month. Listen, man, we love the education. You have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking at Thursday. Can't wait, man. Thanks, Enjoy the man. weather. Okay. See ya. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow at 680, NASDAQ 62, SP's 52. Come right back. If you're